How you doing guys? This is Ryan. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about why I'm investing in Tesla. I've mentioned it a few times on this channel that my interest in Tesla, but I wanted to give a detailed video about all the reasons, all the pros and cons as to why I'm investing in Tesla. Now guys, my goal with this video is I want to hear all the reasons why people disagree with me. Tesla is a very controversial stock and amongst my own friends uh, here on YouTube, a lot of them don't like the stock and a lot of them are staying away from it. And uh, I want to hear more of those concerns, but I really want you to hear me out as to why I want to invest in the company and see if there are conversation if we both can learn something. Disclaimer before we start, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research before investing your money. This video is me doing it for fun and this is me just showing you my research as why I feel confident in investing into this company, but I'm not a licensed professional. Please consult with a licensed professional. And uh, with that disclaimer said, let's jump into it. So Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. <laughs> the first reason I'm very interested in investing in Tesla is actually I've wanted to for a long time and the stock was always very hyped. And trying to evaluate it is difficult because it's a car company that uh, does about 20 to $25 billion in revenue, and yet it is more valuable than Ford, which does about $160 billion in revenue. Why is this company more valuable than a 100-year-old company? In the last 12 months, Tesla is down about 35%. So for me, this looks like a buying opportunity. It's finally, okay, Ryan, you've liked Tesla for a long time. This is the opportunity to buy. So from that, I took a good look at it. I didn't get to buy the very bottom. The stock dropped all the way to $177. I was closing on the property, actually this house I'm living in right now, and I had to wait, I had to wait. So as soon as I secured funds, I started buying Tesla. And I actually I bought, shortly before the earnings, the stock was doing really well, up to about $260 a share. I bought a little bit there and I've been buying it as it kind of crashed down, it's rebounding around the 235 level when I'm shooting this video. So the price has finally fallen and this creates one of two things. When a stock falls, it either creates opportunity or it's uh, or, or it could be what's called a falling knife. Hopefully right now I'm not catching a falling knife with Tesla and I'll tell you why I don't think I am, uh, why I am buying an opportunity. When you evaluate Tesla against Ford, it's kind of difficult because Tesla appears to be more than just a car company. Yes, uh, their, their main source of revenue is selling cars, specifically the Model X, the Model S, and the Model 3. Tesla, in my opinion, is also a technology company, energy company, a utility. So they're very hard to classify, and uh, I want to go over kind of each one. So they, they are a car company, and they do sell lots of cars. And actually, the Tesla Model 3 is the highest grossing sales mid-size sedan in the United States. It, it outsells all of its uh, combustible engine competitors. And this car's only been around for about a year, and they delivered 77,000 vehicles in the last quarter, which this company used to sell 100,000 in a year, and somehow the stock tanked. But people are so concerned about Tesla not making money, burning cash. So we'll talk more about the financial position of the company later on. But the company has fast growing sales from the Model S to the Model X to the 3. We see a company now producing as many cars in a quarter as it would an entire year. Another thing we should talk about is with the Model 3 production, uh, Tesla getting up to producing 5,000 cars a week was very difficult and for lack of a better term, it was kind of a <laughs> show. The company had never done it before, but they did manage. It was difficult and th there's reasons to be bearish on that or you can say the company could have fallen apart if it didn't succeed in, in delivering all the cars that it promised to and that they had orders for if they can keep up with the demand. They actually had to shut down other sectors of the company. So I said Tesla's also an energy company. They really had to ramp down their solar division and all hands go on deck towards building the Model 3. That's my dog Brody here. But the company proved that it can sell the highest grossing car in its class and it's an electric vehicle. That's a reason why I'm really bullish. They're proving they can do, the, they can do volume and the company is going to be releasing more cars. They actually have next year the Model Y will be coming out. It'll be a mid-size SUV and I believe it'll be a lot easier to produce those cars because they've done it before. They've done volume. But what's interesting with Tesla is that they started, I think it was very smart to start with the Model 3 because the SUV market's a much bigger market than the mid-size SUV market. In the United States, we actually sell two to one mid-size SUVs versus mid-size sedans. So the Model Y will likely 
vastly outsell the Model 3. The Model Y is going to be going to be a cheaper version of kind of the Model X. It's going to be able to be built more efficiently because we learned so much from the Model 3. And also, Tesla is going to be able to cross-utilize parts. So I work in the hospitality business. I sell products and, and stuff to restaurants. The one of the most important things to, for a profitable restaurant is being able to cross-utilize menu items that, that allows them to reduce their food costs. So Tesla can do the same thing now with three different models. They can now cross utilize parts. This means less inventory that needs to be purchased, inventory that will be purchased in greater volume, driving down cost. So, what you should take away from that is Tesla now operates at about a 19 to 20% gross profit margin. So, what that means is if they sell a car for $50,000, they're making $10,000 profit. That number is likely to grow by how much? Uh, if you ask Elon Musk, Elon Musk, he believes he can get to 30%, which would be amazing. You're talking about a company doing $25 billion in gross revenue. So literally, gross profit turns into billion, if not billions of dollars in gross profit. I know previously there was a target out there of 25% kind of on the SX and Model 3. Just wondering, is the, is the updated one, is that suggesting that that's no longer in play for the year? Or um, kind of what are the implications um, with today's update? Uh, well. If you factor in the full self-driving option, I think it, it is in play for the year. Um, you know, we, we just need to get, get the features done, make sure they're great, roll them out, and, and re recognize revenue and, and increase the, the take rate on F, uh, full self-driving. There's also, for the, the existing fleet, there's a, a very significant opportunity to upgrade the existing fleet to full self-driving, since most of the fleet has not purchased this option yet. So there's a, there's a significant um, uh, margin potential for the existing fleet to upgrade to full self driving, um, or m which m most of the fleet can. Yeah, um, I, I absolutely th think like long term, we are we are talking t 25 to 30 percent. Not long long term meaning like a year. Um, long term by tells in tells of vernacular. Uh, that 30% gross margin is, I think, quite likely. Yeah, and we, we continue to take significant cost out of uh, the Model 3 in particular as well. And Jerome can comment further on this, but every week, nearly every week, we hit record lows on a labor content to build the vehicle. And Again, that's not net profit, that's gross profit. So after your gross profit, you now have to pay your expenses, your labor, your research and development. I would say marketing for Tesla, but Tesla actually puts no money into marketing and that's another reason why I'm actually bullish on the company because all of the money goes into engineering the best possible product. So Tesla is an amazing product. People who drive Teslas, I think will be driving Teslas for a long time because it's such a quality product and I'm actually planning to buy the Model Y. It'll fit my uh, family well and it's, it's likely to be within my price range. Uh, so I don't own one personally. If Tesla performs very well in the next year, maybe I can sell some and uh, acquire the Model Y. But anyways, but I have driven a Tesla, I have been inside them, and it's a very good quality product, and it's also a very safe car to drive. It's won all kinds of awards as far as safety, and maybe Tesla will change in the future, actually starting to do commercials or different kinds of advertisement for Teslas. But hey, they have people like me and many other people on YouTube promoting their product. Um, so they're, they're very smart about allocating their funds. That's first and foremost. The company ha has a great product. And the company looks like it's gonna to continue to grow because we now have a fourth model car coming out. Also, we're likely to see Tesla's other parts of the business start growing in volume as well. So other revenue sources include the solar roofs, which slowed down with the Tesla Model 3 production. All hands went on board to make sure that the Tesla Model 3 was a success and the car is a success. So you'll see that part of the business likely grow over the next few years. Also, Tesla sells what's called a power pack, which will be used for uh, energy plants and also the homes. So in the future, Tesla will likely sell people a solar roof, or the panels are more efficient for now, but a solar roof, and that energy will go into your garage into a power pack, and then that energy that you took from the sun will go in your car. So the power pack's already a selling product and it's likely to grow more in the future. Now, actually the biggest possible play for Tesla is the race towards autonomous cars. So what is an autonomous car? 
So essentially, autonomous car is a car that can drive itself. And if you've been watching, let's say, the Democratic debates, you see uh, Andrew Yang going on television and telling everyone that automation is coming, and we now need universal basic income because a lot of workers are gonna be displaced. And a lot of this is actually because of Tesla's technology and companies like Tesla's technology, but it's hard to say they really have competition. There's a company called Waymo and Cruise that are also working in this sector. But if you listen to people like Catherine Woods of ARK Invest, their research is showing that Tesla's about three to four years ahead of its competition. I'll play a clip of it here. She actually mentions that one of their people came over from NVIDIA and was so surprised by the technology. Two of our other scores started soaring. One was uh, we learned about their artificial intelligence chip. We, we saw the specs. And our analyst, James Wang, came from NVIDIA. That's what they're replacing. And he said, oh my goodness, and he's going to write something this Wednesday about it. Uh, you know, this leapfrogs the competition. Uh, and they're at least three, if not four years ahead of the competition. And then... So ARC is a management fund that really focuses on investing in disruptive technology. And they have a very good track record so far. And they are putting a huge investment into Tesla. And they believe the price target by 2023 could be as high as $4,000 a share. You know, like I said, we're trading at $235 a share today. And in the bearish case, they see it around $700 a share. I, I think 4,000 is a pretty in, insane number, but if they were to change the world that fast, I mean, why not? But we have to look at things, you know, we have to look at the autonomous market with, with a little bit of skepticism. Their CEO, Elon Musk, predicts that they will have the full capacity for an autonomous vehicle well, by the end of this year. 2019. And what he means by that, it'll be able to, the car can go find you in a parking lot, pick you up, and drive you to a destination without you touching a thing except for the door to come in and out. Now that does not mean there's going to be autonomous vehicles next year. The technology still needs to be refined, I'm sure, and also it's going to be a huge legislative challenge. Elon calls it the March of the Nines, so autonomous vehicles are going to have to show that they are 99.999% safer than a human being to drive to actually get the legislative ability to let autonomous cars operate all the time. Just think of it, if so going on an elevator had a 50% fail risk, you probably wouldn't do it. Would you go on it if it was 99%? Or would you go on it if it was 99.9% or 99.99? The more nines there, the more likely you are to go on the elevator. So how likely are you to let an autonomous car drive for you? Where the technology is in the short term, it's improving. I mean, Tesla's actually have built-in software that are always learning. Tesla has half a million cars on the road every day that are learning how to get smarter and smarter at driving. When the autopilot mode goes on, the driver drives, and whenever the driver disrupts it, the car learns something. So the data, so the amount of data Tesla is getting is a huge competitive advantage to anyone else in the market, and it's why they're years ahead of anyone else. The big question is when will legislators allow this to happen? And will anyone have caught up by then? I don't necessarily think competition is a bad thing. I think competition would actually make Tesla a better company. That leads me to my next point. Tesla this year it will have completed building a second gigafactory in Shanghai, China. And it's a very competitive market for EVs, for electric vehicles. Tesla's put a huge investment going into the country to be able to sell cars to the local market by bypassing tariffs. So Teslas actually do sell in China, but they have a 40% tariff on them. So a $40,000 car is costing people $60,000, and they're actually selling them. Now when they get their full built out Gigafactory, they can bypass that. But there's a lot more competition in China for, for electric vehicles, but it's Tesla's second biggest market, and it's likely to grow a lot more with the popularity of electric vehicles and the better price point. So like I said, Tesla's doing about 20 to $25 billion in annual revenue. They have greater access to China going into next year, and they have another model that will be getting released next year. So the volume is gonna grow. And they also have other models coming out. Uh, they're gonna be coming out with a truck with a base model of $49,000, and they've already unveiled their semi, which will be coming out. So you're looking at huge opportunities for growth in just the vehicle sales, and then like I've talked about, with the energy sector, and then in the future with autonomous technology. And I've even mentioned in a prior video that the autonomous technology will likely take over the ride-sharing business. So a company like Uber or Lyft 
is gonna need to adopt this technology. Or I, I could see Tesla acquiring a company like Lyft, a smaller company. Or you could see some kind of partnership, we'll say. But transportation is changing and Tesla's likely to be a player in that game. So one of the biggest knocks on Tesla is the fact that they, they're not making profits every quarter, they don't return profit. And they're missing expectations. But a lot of tech companies don't make massive profits for a lot of years. Even a company like Amazon, which is profitable, they make a very small percentage of profit. And I don't see Tesla ever being a company that's gonna have a dividend or or be interested in making huge net net profits because they don't seem to have a shortage of ideas or as long as Elon Musk is the CEO of things they wanna do and accomplish. So they'll likely always put a lot of money in research and development and develop new products and ways to improve the company. For me, that's exciting, that's, that's growth. But you can't burn money forever but they have the opportunity to grow their gross profit margin. But people think somehow they're gonna go bankrupt in, like in the short term, but I think they forget how good Elon Musk is at raising money. In a couple weeks, he launched a new product called Neuralink. And essentially what this company is gonna do is gonna allow us to become an attached cyborg. So hear me out. Put a computer chip in your brain to allow you to be more competitive and smarter and compete with, he's very concerned about artificial intelligence. He got Microsoft to give him a billion dollars for this idea. <laughs> so what I'm saying is Tesla is going to need to raise a lot more money in the future. As far as the autonomy technology and how that pursues, it's going to take a lot more capital. And in the short term, I do think the car business will keep on showing greater signs of profitability. As long as Elon Musk is there or the right management is there, I feel confident as a shareholder. So guys, please, please tell me where I'm missing on the stock. Like I said, if it can accomplish all these things and continue growing, it absolutely deserves the $40 billion valuation, and I could see it being worth a few hundred billion dollars. Like any of these other big tech companies that we have today, your Facebooks, your Apples, your Amazons, if they can grow in all these markets and change the world, like Apple has, Amazon has, Facebook has, they will justify that evaluation. So with that said, that's why I am investing in Tesla. I am looking to build out about a $10,000 position over this next quarter. I've already bought a couple thousand. I'm in the process of cash out refinancing a property. And I will be dollar cost averaging over this quarter just because I don't see anything really exciting happening for Tesla in the next month or so. So I think it's a good time to kind of buy in until Shanghai opens. Nothing structurally is really gonna change about the company. They're still gonna be selling a lot of Model 3s, Model S's and Model X's. Uh, once Shanghai opens, I think you'll see a lot of shareholder excitement and more people buying into the stock. And next year they'll have the Model Y, which will be another thing to get shareholders excited about. They'll also unveil a new truck. These are catalysts that will make it a better investment in the short term. And again, by 2023, we'll see if ARK Invest is right. Maybe Tesla will be worth $4,000 a share. So. <laughs> so with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, leave comments below. Tesla's a very controversial stock. I wanna hear about it, I wanna know why I'm wrong. Ryan, you're gonna lose all your money investing in Tesla, you're crazy. Let me know, and I'll see you guys in my next one.